In this video, we're going to talk about meso compounds. Here we have some examples of achiral molecules. As you can see in these molecules, we don't have any asymmetric or chiral carbons, and so these molecules are achiral. On the left, you can see the plane of symmetry here. This carbon here is connected to a hydrogen, oxygen, and CH2 groups, and the CH2 groups are connected to CH2 groups which are connected to a CH over here. So these groups are the same because they're the same on both sides. So this is not an asymmetric carbon. In the molecule on the right, we have a bromine and a bromine attached to this carbon. So this is also not an asymmetric center. And down here we have a bromine and a bromine attached to this carbon. So it is also not an asymmetric carbon. Neither of these molecules have asymmetric carbons they also have planes of symmetry, which means that these molecules are achiral. Well, how about this one down here? This one's kind of weird. If we add in the hydrogens, you can see that it does happen to have asymmetric carbons. This carbon is asymmetric because it has an oxygen and a hydrogen, a CH and a CH2. So it has four different groups attached. This carbon over here is also asymmetric. It has a hydrogen, an oxygen, a CH and a CH2. So it also has four different groups attached. So we have asymmetric carbons, but the molecule is achiral, and that's because of this plane of symmetry here. So even though we have asymmetric or chiral carbons, the whole molecule is achiral because of the plane of symmetry. This compound we can refer to then as a meso compound. Meso compounds have chiral carbons, but are overall achiral due to a plane of symmetry. So here's our formal definition for a meso compound. A meso compound does have two or more asymmetric centers, but is not chiral. You can see the example that we just looked at on the previous slide. It has, of course, two chiral carbons, but due to the plane of symmetry is achiral. So we would refer to this compound as being meso. Let's look at another example. In this case, we have a chiral carbon here. That carbon is attached to a hydrogen, bromine, CH3, and a CH, so it is chiral. Also, this carbon here is chiral. It is attached to a bromine, H, C, and CH3. So it is also chiral. However, we have a plane of symmetry down the middle here, so the molecule is achiral. Because it has chiral carbons, we can also call it meso. Let's use this meso concept to talk about cis-1,2-difluorocyclohexane over here on the left. Cis-1,2-difluorocyclohexane has a plane of symmetry. However, it has a chiral carbon here, and here. So that makes it meso because it has chiral carbons but also has a plane of symmetry. Trans 12 difluorocyclohexane shown over here on the right, however, does not have a plane of symmetry. You can see that the up fluorine is not the same as the down fluorine. So this compound would be chiral. It does not have a plane of symmetry. Now one thing you might be thinking is what happens in the chair conformation? The plane of symmetry isn't evident in the chair conformation. However, you do need to consider that the chair flip gives you a superimposable compound. We consider conformational isomers to be superimposable. For example, this molecule here is the same as this one. All we have to do is do a rotation to get them to be superimposable. Same thing with cyclohexanes. Even though they don't look superimposable and they don't look like they have a plane of symmetry, once you do the ring flip, they do become superimposable compounds, so we consider them to have a plane of symmetry. On an exam, what you need to be able to do is to identify a meso compound, even if it's drawn in a chair conformation or a Newman projection. In the next video, we're going to go into more depth on enantiomers and diastereomers.